This is part two of the chapter 11 lecture series on stock issuances and the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. With the purchase of stock, stockholders are awarded certain rights. First, they are allowed to vote in the election of the board of directors and on any action that requires stockholder approval. Second, they are allowed to share in the corporate earnings through the receipt of dividends. Third, they are awarded the preemptive right. If a corporation decides to issue additional shares of stock, the shareholders are allowed to purchase enough of the new shares to maintain their percent ownership. Fourth, they are awarded the right of residual claim. If a corporation liquidates, the shareholders are awarded, based on their percent ownership, any remaining assets. Now, let's talk about par value and no par value stock. When a corporation issues stock, it must choose whether to issue the stock with a par value or without a par value. Par value is a superficial value assigned to each share of stock. Many years ago, corporations were required to assign a par value to their stock. This value indicated the amount of money that a corporation was required to hold per share of stock to protect its creditors. This method was found to be an ineffective way to protect creditors. Thus, corporations are no longer required to hold such funds in reserve. Therefore, some states no longer require corporations to assign a par value, seeing that there is no purpose for it. However, some companies still assign a par value simply out of habit and for tradition's sake. No par value stock is stock with no assigned par value. No par value stock is often assigned a stated value. For our purposes, par value and stated value are treated the same way. One important note is that par value and stated value are not related to the market value of the stock. The market value is the true value of the stock and is often much higher than the par or stated value. There are two types of stock. The first type and the type that we have talked about in earlier chapters is common stock. All corporations issue common stock, meaning every corporation will have common stock. When preparing the journal entry to record the issuance of common stock, the common stock account is always credited for the par value or stated value of the stock. As an example, assume that Hydro Slide Incorporated issues 1,000 shares of $1 par value common stock at par. These shares are issued at par meaning the corporation will receive the par value for each share of stock. So the company will receive $1 times 1,000 shares or $1,000. We will debit cash for $1,000 and credit common stock for $1,000. Remember to always credit common stock for the par value of the stock. Oftentimes, a shareholder will pay more than par value for a share of stock. If so, we should credit the remaining amount to an account called paid in capital in excess of par value. As an example, assume Hydro Slide Incorporated issues an additional 1,000 shares of $1 par value common stock for cash at $5 per share. The company will receive $5 for each share of stock, or $5,000. The par value of the stock is $1 times 1,000 shares, or $1,000 and the excess paid is $4 times 1,000 shares or $4,000. We will debit cash for the total received of $5,000 and we will credit common stock for the par value of $1,000 and credit paid in capital in excess of par value for the excess of $4,000. Please note that if stock is issued with a stated value instead of a par value, the stated value is treated the same as par value. The only difference is the excess paid should be classed to paid in capital in excess of stated value rather than paid in capital in excess of par value. The second type of stock is preferred stock. In addition to common stock, some corporations, but not all, issue preferred stock. Preferred stock differs from common stock in several ways. First, preferred stockholders have dividend preference over common stockholders, meaning that a company must pay dividends to preferred shareholders before it pays any dividends to common shareholders. Second, if a corporation liquidates, preferred shareholders will get their share of assets before common shareholders get anything. Third, preferred shareholders are not allowed to vote on corporate matters. 
please make note of this difference as it is not listed in your notes. If a corporation issues both common stock and preferred stock, it must use specific excess accounts. It will have a paid in capital in excess of par value dash preferred stock and a paid in capital in excess of par value dash common stock. As an example, Stein Corporation issues 10,000 shares of $10 par value preferred stock for $12 cash per share. The company will receive $12 times 10,000 shares or $120,000. The par value is $10 times 10,000 shares or $100,000 and the excess is $2 times 10,000 shares or $20,000. We will debit cash for $120,000, credit preferred stock for the par value of $100,000, and credit paid in capital and excess of par value dash preferred stock for the excess of $20,000. Now let's talk about Treasury stock. Treasury stock is a corporation's own stock that it has reacquired from shareholders but not retired. A corporation essentially buys back stock that it had previously issued. We typically use the cost method to account for Treasury stock. Under the cost method, we debit an account called Treasury stock for the amount paid for the stock. This account is a contra stockholders equity account. As an example, on February 1, 2013, Mead acquires 4,000 shares of its stock at $8 per share. The company will pay $8 times 4,000 shares or $32,000. We simply debit Treasury stock and credit cash for $32,000. The amount the stock was previously issued for is irrelevant. Now let's learn three important terms related to stock authorized shares, issued shares, and outstanding shares. A corporation's authorized shares is the number of shares the corporation is allowed to issue per its state charter. A corporation's issued shares is the number of shares a corporation has sold to shareholders, including shares bought back as treasury stock. Lastly, a corporation's outstanding shares is the number of shares a corporation has sold to its shareholders and is still held by shareholders meaning that outstanding shares will not include treasury stock. If a company has no treasury stock, then issued shares will equal outstanding shares. The number of authorized shares, issued shares, and outstanding shares is typically disclosed in the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. The stockholders equity section will include a corporation's two sources of equity, paid in capital and retained earnings. Paid in capital or contributed capital is the total amount of cash and other assets paid into the corporation by stockholders in exchange for capital stock. In other words, it's everything given to the corporation by shareholders in exchange for ownership. There are four accounts that will fall under the paid in capital section. Preferred stock, common stock, paid in capital in excess of par value dash preferred stock, and paid in capital in excess of par value dash common stock. Please note that these accounts must be listed in this order. If the corporation only issued common stock, then it will of course not have preferred stock or paid in capital in excess of par value dash preferred stock. The second source of equity is retained earnings or earned capital. Retained earnings is the net income that a corporation retains for future use meaning not paid out as dividends. Here is an example presentation of a stockholder's equity section. Some of the examples in your textbook may be slightly different, but this gives you a good idea. We start with the paid in capital section beginning with preferred stock. The 8% indicates the dividend to be paid on the preferred stock. It is a percent of par value. We have 10,000 shares authorized, meaning we are allowed to issue 10,000 shares. We have issued 4,000 shares and have not bought back any as treasury stock, so issued and outstanding are equal. Then we indicate common stock. We are allowed to issue 600,000 shares. We have issued 300,000, but only 285,000 are still outstanding meaning we bought back 15,000 shares. We then list our excess accounts. We then add up the balances in the four paid in capital accounts to get total paid in capital of 1,777,000. We then add retained earnings from the retained earnings statement. 
Finally, we subtract Treasury stock to arrive at total stockholders' equity of $2,337,000. This completes Part 2 of the Chapter 11 Lecture Series on Stock Issuances and the Stockholders' Equity section of the Balance Sheet. Now let's learn about dividends.